interesting development here guys I've just pulled my car up uh, to have another couple of days hunting went home for a couple of days break and um, it's the 18th of April so the ruts still got a few days of kicking on for me yet but it's 2.30 in the afternoon and I was about to start getting my longbow ready to have a rock and roll and uh, there's a buck behind me croaking so I just chucked my bono harness on and went and had a quick look and he's a big old cull fella. I told my wife that I might try and shoot a couple of culls with the rifle to guarantee some more meat for one um, and try and you know, improve the genetics here somewhat. Uh, so what I might do is actually grab the rifle, try and shoot him and then uh, spend the next couple of days poking around with my longbow because I could get him rolled and <laughs> still have plenty of time to start in a hunt with my bow if it all works out well so we'll see what I can make happen anyway. I can always use some more meat in the freezer. Working hard in the sun the poor bugger. <laughs> well in the middle of the day. Three hundred and fifty-five meters. So I really would like to get another hundred and fifty on them, which shouldn't be too hard. I can hear a few others going off behind me as well. So, as much as I'm, um, <laughs> I enjoyed the struggle with the longbow last week. I'm going to enjoy it again a few more days, but definitely want some more meat at the moment. Um, and happy to do that. I'm 236 metres away, which to be fair is a pretty easy shot with the 243, but a couple of wind gusts and looks like I should easily be able to get another 50 metres or more on them, so I'm just going to poke my way up, but just chill under those trees up there, so there's no rush at all, but I'd like to, I'd like to get it done and have all the meat hanging up um, before the Arvo hunt really kicks off, so I'll we'll try and put something together here. I'm mostly set up. About 170 metres away. They've all bedded down, so I must have woken up to have a bit of fun and <laughs> gone back to sleep again. So it's just a waiting game for the moment. Um, worst things to be doing. Just dropped him. Been sitting here waiting for probably 45 minutes. <laughs> and yeah, we'll go and uh, go and have a look at him and start dressing him out. He's a bit of a messy head. <laughs> Good one to take out. Pretty old battler. Well, he's certainly got some character to him. Missing his tray or tine or whatever it is here. His brow's fairly long, this one's short. His tine's much smaller than what it should be. 
So he's obviously been busted off in a few fights. I'll have to check some footage I got last year. Maybe he's um, one that I saw in a fight last year, I'm not sure. Yeah, and he's obviously got no food in his tummy. He's been working pretty hard. He's a good one to take out, but call old battler nonetheless. It'll be welcome meat in my freezer for my family and friends, and I'll still poke around here a little bit more with my long by the next couple of days and see if I can <laughs> pull something out of my backside and get lucky. I've got a fair bit of sunlight left, so rather than rush this and get back to the car for a quick longbow hunt. I think I'm just going to take my time. Um, he's nowhere near as stinky and rank as what he probably should be, but um, I'll skin him out real nice and make sure none of the meat gets super dirty and I don't know where the bullet's going to be. It's a fairly front on shot, so maybe his shoulders will be okay. I don't know. But either way, I've got um, a nice hillside here, so just poke around and get it all done and Get back to camp uh, by this evening and have a couple of drinks. This will be the third buck I've put in these Kafaru game bags, which um, I'm very happy with, despite being fairly expensive. And yeah, I might use two knives depending on how dirty one of them gets. I'll skin out this entire side and roll it back um, to keep the meat clean. You can see I haven't gutted him or anything. He's just got no food in his guts at all. You can see here I'm doing my best to leave as much meat on the carcass as I can. Once again I've got I've got all the time in the world really so I'm just uh, you can see here I'm pulling the hide in my direction and coming in over the top of it. Not that I'm leaving, I'm keeping the hide anyway, but it just gives you an idea about skinning technique if you are going to be keeping something yourself or skinning out for a rug. Keep over the top of the meat and it'll save a lot of fleshing when you get home. And the salt will uh, penetrate the skin and lock those hair follicles in much better. You can also see I've got the hide laid out away from the meat, so any scent that might be in the hide, given he's pretty rutted up, is not going to contaminate the meat. Won't be perfect, but it, you know, every extra bit of effort you make in the field uh, will pay off when you get home. Is the bullet hole just there. This here is obviously where a stack of funkiness is so after I grab this and start to skin it out in this direction probably wash my hands briefly. I'm also going to skin uh, or make my initial cut down here and skin over this direction and pull this all away so I'm not necessarily going to be touching this area anywhere near as much as what uh, other people may. Bud's wondering what his mate's up to. <laughs> He's not a real good head either, but the thing he has going for him is he's much younger. So, no need to shoot him for the moment. And I'll get back to what I'm doing. Still got old mate behind me. You might be able to see, there's another one. Oi! He's only a little fella as well, so we'll leave him alone. Of course, they're all walking up to me when I haven't got me a long way, but you know, this is what happens. Get back to doing what I was supposed to be doing. You note here, I'm not going to keep letting go with my left hand and pulling more of the hide up. Once I've got a good hold of it, I'm going to hang on to it as long as I can 
even though I'm not necessarily going to take all this meat, it's just going to make it much easier to pull the hide out of the way um, when I come to take this back leg off. I can actually feel my left hand touching the gunky stuff there, so I'm not going to handle other parts of the leg or meat for the moment. I'm just going to keep my hand on that side. And give it a wash before I take that meat off. Right here, guys. You see I've done the old Remy Warren and use your <laughs> mouth as a tap to wash some of the gunk off your hands trick. I gave them a pretty decent wipe on the grass as well. If you're smarter than me, you'll bring gloves. I never bring gloves. And I've also got this buck skinned out entirely on one side now. So I can take off all the meat on this side, back leg, back strap, and uh, neck, and even going and get the tenderloins because he won't be bloated. Um, and then do the whole thing and roll over on the other side. You can see here I did leave some meat on here. It's no big deal. Look, I'm not keeping this hide anyway, but you could definitely see um, the technique in terms of cutting off the top of that kind of meat to save the flesh and job when you get home. It's a good idea to have your game bags laid out, ready to go, and uh, the way I've worked the last couple of deer I've done is I can go the entire side of a deer per Kefaru game bag, so I only need two game bags for this. I know I've said I'll do some more detailed videos of this stuff in the past and I'm actually going to be here shooting some um, younger animals for meat in the coming weeks so I might even do it on them but you can see here I've got the back leg cut down to the pelvis here I've just popped the ball and socket joint as you can see don't mind that blood coming out and I'll cut down in this direction with my knife here I'm running it on the pelvis. I'm gonna to get to a point where I'm gonna cut like this and then go around underneath this piece of the pelvis. You see it just there. Okay. So I can actually cut back towards the spine there. This next section up here, do the same thing I find where the bone is underneath here and that bone actually goes up in this direction I actually get in here and push like this my knife up against the pelvis and scrape it all along so that way I can't hit guts and I come out where I need to so and actually you can't really see but you can hear it in there So in doing this by scooping underneath this side of the pelvis here, you keep all this meat here, which is the rump, and some of the tastiest parts. Don't know what it's going to look like in here because the bullet obviously went in the front, so <laughs> there's a really big hole in there, but I think there's enough left of the shoulder to salvage it. You can see if 
you can see really well here that the pelvis is both where the back leg stops and the back strap stops. And I'm going to take this back strap all the way up to the atlas joint and take as much of this neck meat as I can as well because it is great for slow cooking. It's a little bit extra effort but at the same time, uh, you know, the more meat you can get off the deer, the better. It's not the cleanest way to do it, but it definitely works. You want that little bit of extra meat, which is a good camp snack. Another young fella come to say good day. This process is barking. I don't know, I guess one of his younger cousins is coming in. Like I said before. They just walk up to me when I haven't got the longbow. <laughs> Hear a big one going off just over here. Yeah, mate. You're safe this evening, bud. Yeah, I probably smell rank too. I'll try to find your dad in the morning with my longbow, eh? Bag nearly loaded. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, little fellas. If I have my longbow, they may be in trouble, but there's another one over here, too. Anyway, we'll see what tomorrow brings.